morning everybody well it's morning for us on uh, August 25th and we are attempting and starting early today in our experiment with cornbread we've got our road pro portable stove um, this is the um, particular uh, item that Nick has had um, for a couple years now and has used and used quite frequently but we are going to continue our experiment with cornbread. I had pre prepared it up there and put it in the pans. Of course, sprayed it with some cooking spray. We're hoping that, considering the element is also above, that the top might get brown. So we'll definitely find out. So we'll check it in about an hour. And there's another probably subscriber or comment on our page. We'll have to go check that out as well. So stay tuned on the cornbread today. All right, everyone, it's been about 45 minutes. We're taking a look at the cornbread and it is cooking up a lot faster than I suspected it to. So it is looking really good. It's actually hard. Now we'll just leave it in a little bit longer, see if it'll get browned up. And we will check on it in probably about another 15 minutes or so. Hey everybody, it's about 15 minutes later and I don't know if you can all see this, but it is browning up around the edges. So we are just going to keep on going. We'll check it in a little while later. Alright everybody, it's been about two hours since we put the cornbread in. It's looking really good. We are going to give it about another half an hour and see how it looks then. Hi everyone, it's been um, almost three hours since we put in the cornbread. And I popped it out of the pan. Of course, I sprayed it with the cooking spray, so it popped right on out. And it's nice and golden brown, a little darker on the bottom, but that's all right. Looks like a nice little loaf of cornbread that we will enjoy with our enchiladas later tonight. Hey everyone. We just did a quick little Walmart stop and we got us some fresh meat. We got some uh, boneless pork sirloin roast. Roast will do up in the crock pot. Should fit right on in there. We got some brats, just original brats. Um, I've already packaged them, taken them out of their package. It's probably the biggest thing I could suggest to you guys if you're trying to do the um, fresh meats is sometimes the packaging is not going to fit in your coolie. Um, because as you know, like this one, it's got the styrofoam thing and that does sometimes just does not work in the coolie. But we also got stew, some beef stew meat and oops, shaking you guys all around. Sorry about that. And some pork stew meat that we are going to do up this week. Um, we also, we did about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, maybe 15 and we got enough food about several bags worth I got to put it all away here um, and we will eat again for another couple of weeks <laughs> so this is probably like the most convenient thing we will spend about a hundred dollars um, every gosh two to three weeks I think it's been about three weeks since we've did some more shopping so this should be last us some good thing the other thing I can suggest when you guys are packing down in your trucks is like we got the enchilada kits here you can see here um i will take these all the stuff out of these big boxes because they take up so much space um plus i've used them so much i know exactly what <laughs> is in them even though they're not marked so um otherwise just pack yourself a sharpie and make sure you mark everything and write down any instructions in a notebook or something um before you discard the box but yeah that's the biggest thing is packaging 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 needs to do when you're trying to can get everything in to a confined space like your truck. That's probably how I got everything <laughs> in if you watch our other videos of stuff in this truck. So it's the only way I survive in here. So getting everything in. Well, I'm gonna get the meat back in the coolie and probably start some cooking for today. So stay tuned. So yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a little quick peek into the coolie since I depackaged some of that meat it fits all the way down in there to where it's going to stay nice and cold and I still actually have a little bit of space here. So like I said, that's the best thing I can suggest to you guys is just 
packaging get little um, like I take the lunch meat here out of its um, packaging and just puts it in um, Ziploc bags that's the best thing I can suggest to y'all and then you get more for your money the other thing I can suggest to y'all is Tupperware if you can fit into your truck bring it along because you're gonna save money by of course shopping Walmart or other um, cheaper stores like I think believe we picked this up at uh, save a lot or Aldi's or something and it's really good but it's almost empty and it's not gonna fit in the coolie so what I'm gonna do is since I got these little things of Tupperware this will fit in the coolie right now I'm just gonna take it plop it in there and we're good to go and we still have our cheese sauce so it's all good so that's just another little suggestion I can like spread the word on see I got it all in there and it'll fit right here on the top of the coolie look at that perfect and we still have it and we haven't wasted anything and we just got rid of that whole big jar that was just taking up space so we got our coolie packed up as you can see kind of dark I apologize and we're good to go like I said I still got some room in there I might throw a couple more things in there we love this cool tron coolie by the way I don't know if we've showed this to you and we let it sit on the end of the bunk because the bunk's longer and I'm shorter so um, it works really well um, we had a little Coleman that Nick used for the couple of years he worked for the other company the only downside with that one was the fan at the top would um she got this little fan device um this one leaks as well but that other one I mean it would leave puddles in the bottle of the cooler this one hasn't been too bad um I do keep a little towel handy um sometimes if I got a lot in there and it's kind of warm I'll just kind of keep the towel right in there so it just drips on the towel. But otherwise, other than that, we haven't really had any pooling or anything in it. We actually really love this coolie. So Nick, what do you think now of the truck? Well, as it was when I first got it, it's a nice smooth ride. And that's because we uh, stopped out of all places at Gary, Indiana Terminal. After uh, we dropped in Hammond, Indiana, uh, we went over and I... Uh, let Debbie know that we were having some issues with. Well, first off, there was a trailer gouge and or a, a gouge in one of the trailer tires, so that was one of the reasons we were going to go uh, from the trailer we just picked up. And then, uh, then I was like, well, while we're going in, I might as well get the front end looked at on the truck itself. Went in, and they put a brand new set of steers on, and as you can see, she's a nice, smooth ride. Yeah, again. you were not jiggling like we were. <laughs> yeah, but I, I miss my jiggly woman. <laughs> I guess I'll have to find other ways to make it jiggle. <laughs> All right, guys, we got this pork boneless stew meat. Yeah, Nick grabbed really freaking quick. That, yeah, when we did our Walmart run today. And we're going to put that up in the crock pot. We're going to throw some carrots. I got some carrots here. And then we got this spicy Cajun barbecue sauce that I think we picked up at what, Aldi's? Uh, big lots. Big lots, something like that, when we had some time. One of the two. It's that day that we went uh, double drop in Omaha. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, so, Omaha. I don't know, somewhere up there. Omaha, I think. So, yeah, we're going to add that and get that going up in our crock pot there. So, All right, folks, it's about five hours later and we're stopped for the night. And this is what it looked like when it turned out. It smells really, really good. We put, like I said, we put the carrots and the pork and then that spicy Cajun barbecue sauce. And then I made up some garlic potatoes. Don't forget the orange juice and honey. Oh yeah, that's right. We put some little bit of orange juice, probably about a quarter cup, a third of a cup in between there. And we put probably a couple tablespoons of honey in it as well just to kind of more flavors in there and then we're serving it over garlic roasted garlic mashed potatoes yum yum all right everyone today we are going to do up that uh, pork loin roast that we got at walmart the other day again we're doing the spicy barbecue these here it is Sorry, spicy barbie, Cajun barbecue. <laughs> and a little shot of orange juice. And I already put away the honey, but I did squirt some honey in there. 
we put some on the bottom and then over the top and we're gonna just kind of let it cook and see what happens all right hey folks it's about about three hours i added some more water some more sauce a little more honey a little more oj and it's cooking up quite nicely we're gonna let it go for a couple more hours all right everyone looks like the little pork loin roast is all done it smells really good you guys can't smell it unfortunately otherwise you'd say it was really good so we've got some loaded mashed potatoes loaded baked mashed potatoes we're gonna make with it and I'll probably throw the carrots on in some sliced carrots in with the mashed potatoes and that'll be dinner so that took about um, four five hours to cook that up um, of course we did it in our little robe pro crock pot which is just one temperature setting which we've kind of denounced that it's setting high so if you are accustomed to slow cooking roasts and stuff in a slow cooker usually a high setting for a roast like that would take about three four hours so there you go that would be dinner tonight i don't know if you guys can see the steam coming off of it but it's nice and piping hot and smells real good so we're gonna go enjoy Ha ha ha! Eat your heart out, Picasso! I'm Cheeto and I approve of this message. Oh, come on! What the hell?